burst forth on Easter morning and is alive forevermore. Uh, and that means life-changing hope for you and for me and for all people. Uh, and so what a joy it is that we get to uh, gather together this day to worship, to celebrate our Lord and our Savior. Uh, any, if there's any uh, guests or visitors who are with us this day, we're so glad that you're here and know that you're always welcome to worship with us at Holy Cross anytime. Uh, and we are just uh, so thankful uh, for the opportunity for us to, again, to worship our Lord, to receive his gifts of forgiveness and grace for us, and to go forward with the hope that we have boldly uh, out into the world to share that with other people each and every day. Uh, I'm not going to just let you uh, read the announcements that we have in the bulletin uh, at your leisure, uh, but at this time, let's stand and greet each other with the peace of our Lord.
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You may be seated for our next hymn. you 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. He went about doing good 
and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson for this morning is from Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, please stand as we sing together the Alleluia verse. <laughs>
we'll, re we'll read it one more time, just so everybody can hear. Pastor, should I, I should have gotten you a microphone, buddy. White is for the bread they broke before the sad event. Black is for the dark night in the garden where Jesus went. Orange is for the sunrise on the day of his arrest. Purple for the robe he wore, the king they called him just. Red is for the blood he spilled, which was for me and you. Pink is for his mother, whose heart broke in two. Do you think Jesus' mother was sad when he died? Yeah, yeah. The grass outside the tomb was green when Magdalene arrived. And yellow is for her shock to find out Jesus is alive. alive. And so as you guys each, I want you each to take a bag of jelly beans. And as you see them, and as you ask your parents if you can eat them, as your mom and your grandma and your grandpa. You can give one to Isaiah. But I want you to remember the story of Jesus and how he died on the cross and how he rose from the dead for our forgiveness and for our life. And you get to do that while enjoying a tasty treat. Does that sound good? Yeah, I think so too. Well, let's say a prayer together. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for all our sins and for rising to do life so that we may have life in you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, that's our message for today. time we continue by singing our sermon hymn number 467, Awake My Heart with Gladness.
for your soul. Yes, we Christians on this day hear Jesus say greetings to the Marys. And shortly after this, he greeted his disciples on the mountain in Galilee. The Apostle Paul tells us that he then eventually greeted some 500 other witnesses. And the message of those greetings of the resurrected Lord Jesus and the message of the one who is the way and the truth and the life has been passed down through the centuries so that you and I are gathered here today believing and worshiping him once more. We are, as the ones who uh, Jesus said to Doubting Thomas, do you believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Yes, Jesus calls us blessed, but there's still a problem. We so long to see him, don't we? We so long to see him. You and I have heard his words. We've heard the greetings as recorded, but we have heard his greetings from a book. We've heard his greetings from a book, not from his lips. We have, greet, we have been greeted with pictures and images of what we think Jesus looked like and looks like, but we have not seen the resurrected Lord Jesus in the flesh, face to face, eye to eye. But what do we come face to face with every day? What are we greeted with daily? We're greeted with sin, with death, and with the devil. We see sin at work in this world and in our own lives. We see it in others and ourselves as we live contrary to God's plan, not loving God with our whole heart, not loving our neighbors as ourselves by what we've done and by what we've left undone. Coveting what others have had and what we don't have, oh, for a better car, house, for relationships, or job, you name it. Uh, Trusting in wealth or worrying about the possessions we don't have. Maybe easy to do right now in the economy that we have. Gossiping about others or saying straight up lies. Stealing from other people, whether it's robberies at the grocery store or rigging a car off the streets. Misusing God's good gift of sexuality meant for a husband and for a wife. And getting confused about what God says about gender. People speaking hate and even taking that hate to the point of taking another person's life, defying parental authority and other authorities as well, such as the governing authorities, as long as, of course, they don't permit us from following our Lord and His Word, for beginning about resting in God's Word and worshiping Him regularly, flippantly using God's name with casual, oh my gods, and cursing, and ultimately, this goes to fearing, loving, and trusting in all kinds of other things, all kinds of other religions, all kinds of other ideas that this world throws out at you, instead of trusting and fearing and loving the one God of the universe, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All of this sin is worthy of condemnation and death. All of this sin, the devil throws in your face that others are guilty of and that you are guilty of too. And so am I. That's what we're greeted with daily. So then why does this past event of Jesus' death and resurrection matter? You know, when all of this evil and suffering is what we're greeted with daily. Well, dear friends, it matters because there's more to the story. The creed that we confess does not end, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, the end. Oh, great story. It happened 2,000 or so years ago. Jesus is just another fact in the history books, something that we sort of passively acknowledge. So what? Now sin and death and the devil, they just kind of get to go on unabated forever as we mourn over it in our world, as we cry to God over the suffering and the oppression that we see and experience in our lives and the lives of those we love and out in the world. Earlier this week, I had a friend of mine who graduated from my seminary class. He was a pastor up in Iowa, and he died following the battle with cancer. He served faithfully as a pastor five and a half years or so up in Iowa. His
Is this story of Easter just a past event uh, that he could reflect on theoretically? No, because the creed continues with these words. Yes, on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. Present tense. Our Lord Jesus is reigning and ruling over all things right now. And he will come again, future tense, with glory to judge the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. We need to be greeted with that reality each and every day of our lives again and again, especially as we're greeted with a world that throws at us sin and death and the devil each day. So we don't see him, but does Jesus still greet us now? You bet he does. And for that we go back to the creed. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, present tense, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, present tense, and the life of the world to come, future tense. You see, the Holy Spirit is at work through these gifts as Luther encourages us to begin every day with the sign of the cross and in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, recalling the name that was placed upon us in our baptism, where we are claimed as God's children, where we are literally buried and resurrected with our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, as Paul tells us in Romans 6. In our baptism, our resurrected Jesus says, Greetings, you are my child. When you come to worship and you confess your sins, and you hear those blessed words of forgiveness and absolution through the pastor, that is as if Jesus himself is standing right here and saying, Greetings, your sins are forgiven, you as you come and you receive this sacred meal of bread and wine with Jesus' body and blood in with and under it, you receive forgiveness and life and salvation. The resurrected Jesus comes to you in this meal and says, Greetings. And he is here with you with all the saints of God, with all the people. As you gather together, you're not in this alone. We in America are so often about being individuals and doing things our own way. But you're not in this alone. You're in this with a group of people, with a community of faith. And you're reminded of those love and promises as you gather together in worship. Even as you lift up your prayers together, Jesus says he hears those. And the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Yes, Jesus greeted the women at the tomb, the disciples and all those witnesses of the resurrection in one way, and one way that we long for. But he still greets you in these ways now. That's not all. On Monday, Thursday evening, uh, two of our boys were riding home with me from church, and as we were driving up 61, there was this beautiful golden-orange sunset. And as we saw that awesome display of God's creation, I couldn't help but think of that wonderful hymn that we sang on All Saints Day. I encourage you right now to open your hymnals and turn to page 677. It's this wonderful hymn that we sing each year, recalling those who have gone before us in the faith. And it's called, For All the Saints. That hymn that looks ahead to the new creation, that looks ahead to the why and the ultimate purpose and meaning of Easter, that we are a new creation in Christ, that we as God's people who look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Together, we're going to sing verses 6, 7, and 8. And I encourage you, I invite you then to stand on the last verse. Notice that verse 6 is over on the right side <coughs> of your hymn. We sing together.
have online giving on the blue give, rebel give icon at Holy Cross St. John.org, and also uh, by mail is another way to give as well. So thank you for your continued support and generosity of our Lord's work here in this place. As we receive the offering, we sing our offering for him in Christ alone. Mm -hmm.
Pastor Andrew Johnson, who went to be with you. We ask that you would give them comfort in their grief. We ask also for all who request our prayers, including those we name silently in our hearts at this time and those we name in our prayer guide. By your healing grace, defend them from every evil to body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy, O Lord, all your servants who have departed with the sign of faith and now rest in the sleep of peace. On the day of the resurrection of all flesh, grant that we and all your servants of the mystical body of your Son may all together be set on his right hand and hear his most joyful voice, saying, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant this, O Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and for the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we go with the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn number 461, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. <laughs>
this day as we celebrated our risen King and as we received his good gifts for us. I hope and pray you all have a great Easter and a great week in the Lord. And if you desire, Sam back here has some jelly bean prayers and some jelly beans for a treat on the way out. Have a great week in the Lord and happy Easter.